Hi everyone, welcome and Happy New Year! My name is Billy and today I thought I would share with you something different for the New Year. Uh, today I have uh, several pajamas that I will share with you. So the genesis for all these pajamas that I will share with you today is that I have not purchased any pajamas for several years and whatever I had uh, were really uh, worn out. And it's, that's just kind of strange, that's just how it is. Um, when you buy a matching pajama set, invariably the bottom will wear out before the tops. So eventually I was just left with a whole bunch of tops uh, with no pajama bottoms. So I would purchase some um, sort of a loose fitting leggings um, that are made from cotton. Um, however, those were also worn out and some of them, the elastic just would not retract anymore and some of them started to get holes in the crotch area. So I was in dire need of some pajama bottoms. And uh, since I was really busy also uh, in December, you know, for the year-end deals, and but I still wanted to do a bit of sewing, you know, just as a way to unwind at the end of the day. So I wanted to do something uh, that is both relatively easy and also what I really needed, which are some pajama bottoms. And uh, so instead of purchasing a new sort of pajama uh, pattern, I just turned to an, uh, an existing one that I already had that was not meant as pajama bottoms. And that was the Simplicity 2258 uh, that I previously talked about in my video number three. So this was a very early project. And that Simplicity pattern is for the length of a, what I guess called a clam digger. You know, it's a fairly short. Uh, but in my case, I wanted to turn that into pajamas, so I just lengthened uh, the leg portion. And from, you know, other garments, jeans or whatever, I knew my inseam should be about 29 inches. So I just lengthened, so I just measure uh, from the bottom of the crotch to, you know, to say 29 inches plus a, an inch for the hem of the pant cuffs. And so that's how I got it. And uh, so what I'm wearing, so this is actually a generic t-shirt that I uh, made using uh, a new look uh, 6246 pattern that I previously talked about uh, in my video uh, 9 and 10. And so this is what it looks like. So this is just, you know, generic uh, white t-shirt. But these are the, the, the first version of the pajama pants from that simplicity pattern. And this fabric is actually uh, some quilting cotton from Walmart and uh, this was purchased incredibly early on in my sewing journey so I didn't know what I was you know what I should be looking at when I purchased something online so I was really horrified when the fabric arrived, it's just totally not what I wanted. Obviously, I do not mean to be unkind, but this is just not what I wanted. So, so I, you know, so because I could actually return it, so I tried to return it uh, to Walmart. But they were actually nice. They, they just refunded my money and told me to keep the fabric. So that's what I did. And since this was sort of my version one of my pajama uh, bottom, so I thought I would use this. But because the way the pattern piece is designed, it seems to be a fairly inefficient use of the fabric. So what I did is because this is a cotton cotton, you know, so it's really evenly woven. So I actually cut the pants uh, across the grain. And as a result, you can see here the 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 anchors are you know facing uh sideways instead of you know, north and south but i didn't care since it was just pajama bottoms uh but overall i am really happy i worked out and they are the the, the pajama pants are perfectly comfortable so i was very happy how it uh, worked out so here is a quick video of this anchor print pajama bottom and as you can see because uh, this pattern is for woven fabric, so it naturally is a bit more loose fitting, uh, but overall I'm really happy how it worked out. Uh, so, 
so overall, you know, it's perfect. It's pajama bottom. So the fit is not so important. So that makes it a very easy uh, project. After the success of the anchor print uh, pajama bottoms, I thought that I would make the same pajama bottom using a cotton jersey fabric that I already had in my stash. And so that was what I did. And so this is the result of that. And uh, so overall, I mean, I'm not sure what else to say other than it's pajama bottoms. So the fit is not particularly important. However, one thing I uh, is actually quite helpful is that when I measure, when I decide how the elastic and the waistband, you know, how long it should be, basically I just use my waist measurement uh, plus one inch. And the way I attach the, the elastics is a channel. And then, but then the way I connected two ends of the elastics is that you, the two ends will meet this way so there's no overlap. And what I did is just use a wider zigzag stitch on my machine. And this way, the connection is perfectly secure and there is no bulk because, you know, there is no overlap of the elastic. They are just sort of butted flash against each other and so that works great and uh, um, so what happened was that pajama bottoms use is quite fabric hungry because in this case I did follow the grain because for Jersey I learned before that the stretch must go this way and uh, so that pajama bottom took uh, well over one yard I want to say maybe 1.3 1.4 yards of the two yard of this fabric that I had but I was able to cut out a matching short sleeve pajama top uh, for the pajama bottom using the same uh, new look 6246 pattern that I used previously in my videos number nine and number 10. So here is a look of that pajama set that I made from two yards of about 58 inch wide cotton jersey from Joanne and so here is a quick look of this uh, print the uh, the short sleeve sort of jersey pajama top that I uh, made for the set is also from that new look 6246 pattern but in this case I raised the neckline by one and a half inches and so basically it's quite simple to raise it you just follow the shoulder seam you know go up by one and a half inches and then just follow the same neckline up by one and a half inches for both the bodice front and the bodice back so it's really simple and about the length of the neck band um i have a, i just sort of googled around and uh, i did a bit of digging on the internet and it appears that generally the general rule is that you will measure the final neckline of your, uh, say, t-shirt or a jersey top. And the neck band, the finished size of the neck band should be about 80% of the neckline of the bodice. And uh, so in that was what I did in this case. And so as you can see, it lays down pretty uh, flat. So I am very happy how it works out. But obviously, if your fabric is less stretchy, in this case, I am. This these are uh, this is 100% cotton from Joanne's proprietary line, I think, of Pop, uh, and it has you know sufficient mechanical stretch, so there is no elastic whatsoever, and uh, I really love it. And about the sleeve, because this is what the maximum I could cut out from the remaining uh, fabric after making the uh, the pajama bottom. So in this case, I also made a little cuff to extend the uh, the sleeve length. And in this case, the cuff length of this little cuff is 90% of the circumference of the, um, of the sleeve here because I did not want it to be too cinched in because, you know, it's still meant as a pajama top. So I want it to be fairly loose fitting and so it would be comfortable. And uh, so this is what it looks like. So as you can see, just a little bit in, but not too much. So this is 90% and this is 80%. So it works out great. So I'm really happy uh, about how this pajama set 
uh, works out. To finish the hem of the pajama top or the lace of the pajama bottoms, I used the twin needle method uh, for that. And this is the first time I used a twin needle. And it actually is not as intimidating <laughs> as, you know, somehow I was under the impression of. And, uh, and so here are two pictures showing you the top and bottom of the finish. And I'm very happy. And this is before I pressed it at all. And so as you can see, uh, the result looks almost as good as a cover stitch machine. So I'm really happy about how it works out. After hemming all these pajama tops and pajama bottoms, I thought that I would share with you some of the twin needle tips that I have learned along the way. Uh, number one is that uh, to eliminate any type of tunneling, i.e. you know when there is a raised ridge in the space between the two lines of the stitching, you want to reduce the upper thread tension. So for example, I did the twin needle, needle finish on my old uh, brother's sewing machine. And normal, the normal setting for the upper thread tension is between four and five. However, in this case, I reduced it all the way down to one. And so that allowed it to uh, th allow the final hem to sit very flat. And so that's number one. And number two is uh, sometimes you see the finish on jersey garment to be somewhat wavy. And I think that is because the two layers were not fit by the machine at the same time. So eliminate that, I also used a walking foot um, that I already had with my old brother's sewing machine. And so that was what I did. And though that in that way, it ensured the two layers of the fabric were fed at the same rate. And that eliminated any kind of risk for the wavy or kind of lettuce effect. So that's number two. And number three is I noticed originally that because I sew mainly with cotton threads, uh, well, pretty much 100% of the time anyway. And so even because the two threads from the twin needle are thread, threaded exactly the same channel, so then I will get tangled, they will get tangled up right before the, the, uh, the threads go into the eyes of the needle. And so what I did was I did a bit of a Rube Goldberg, uh, so I'm not sure how safe this method is. Uh, so, so please do use it at your own risk. So what I did was, you know, as you can see from the picture of the sewing machine, that that is the last loop of the thread will go to before the thread uh, goes into the eye of the needle. So what I did was I just uh, stick a bent needle threader in the middle and kind of fold it over a bit. And so that piece of metal wire separates out the thread for the left needle and the threads for the right needle. And so that eliminated um, the tangling of the two threads and that works out great. So that is one way to eliminate that tangling. Another option is simply to use threads that are naturally more slippery and therefore would naturally reduce uh, the risk of tangling. And it so happened that I had some silk threads at home. So in the very beginning when I started sewing, I purchased some silk threads to use uh, when I sew with silk fabrics. However, the problem with using silk threads is that the silk threads are much finer than cotton threads. And as a result, they really sank into the fabric. And that made it very difficult for me to unpick the stitching, especially in the beginning when I started sewing. Uh, unpicking is really just a way of life. And even now I still unpick uh, fairly often. And so I just end up not using the silk threads at all. I just use cotton threads when I sew with silk, it worked out perfectly fine. But as a result, I had some silk threads uh, lying around. And so I tried uh, threading the twin needle uh, using the silk threads. And actually, they worked out great 
because uh, silk threads are made from the saliva of the silkworms. So it's some sort of protein already. So the result is fairly slippery. So even when I threaded uh, both threads through that same channel on the sewing machine, they did not get tangled up at all. And it works out beautifully. So that is also another method of avoiding uh, the two threads getting tangled up or you are using the twin needle. So here is a quick video of this sort of daisy print pajama set. And I'm just really happy I worked out. It's perfectly comfortable, perfectly soft. Uh, so I am really happy how it uh, works out. And these things take no time to make at all. And so I can whip up the top in one evening and the bottom in another evening. So that is great. So these are definitely sort of instant gratification-ish type of projects. One issue that I had with that simplicity pattern uh, for making pajama pants is that because the pants are fairly loose fitting, uh, they would not fit side by side, you know, for the pattern pieces of my size uh, using the same width of the fabric. And as a result, I feel that it was not very efficient use of the fabric. So I wanted to see if I could narrow down the legs a bit, uh, since I don't need the pants to be so baggy. So I wanted to narrow down the pants a bit to see if I could uh, cut out the pant pieces side by side using the same, you know, entire width of the fabric. And so this is a picture of how I uh, narrow it down a bit. I kept the crotch the same, but I narrowed down basically the leg portion. And then for the waist, I would just come in a little bit. And so that was what I did. And uh, for the most amount that I reduced uh, for the leg portion is about one inch. So that's not very much. However, that was just enough to allow me to cut out the pan pieces uh, side by side using the width of this about 58 inch wide cotton fabric uh, from Joanne. So here is a picture comparing the two versions of uh, this pajama pants uh, using jersey fabrics. So the original one is the teal, uh, the one in teal with a sort of a daisy print. And then the sort of narrower version, a bit more fitted version, is the one with the ladybug print. And uh, so I, I overall, I do think I like the, the bit more narrow fit version better because it's just not as baggy. But the big difference is that because the, the more fitted pan version, allow me to cut out the pen pieces using the entire width of the fabric, I was able to cut out this, uh, this uh, pajama top using the rest of it. So this is a long sleeve top. And so really exactly the same also uh, using that new look 6246 pattern. And so here's a quick look of uh, this uh, ladybug print pajama set. I am really happy I worked out. I think overall I do like it. It's not as baggy and it allows me to cut out this entire set using two yards of fabric. So I am really happy about it. After the success of this more fitted version of the pajama bottoms, I wanted to make another one. And uh, it so happened that I had uh, whatever that I had left over uh, from an earlier project that I talked about in my video nine before, whatever the leftover from that dress was actually enough to cut out this uh, narrower version of the pajama pants. So that's what I did. And so here is a picture of uh, this other one. And so I am really happy how it worked out. So it takes no time at all and truly is almost an instant gratification type of project. After the success of the two sort of more fitted versions of the pajama bottoms made in Jersey, I saw that I could you know, try making it uh, with a flannel fabric that I had in my stash. So that was what I did. And so this is the result of that. And 
overall the fit is fine it's you know still very comfortable even though it's a woven fabric however the mistake i made was that for a woven fabric because it does not stretch um you know, so but this is um so these are the pants themselves these are uh sort of a leopard print uh flannel that i also purchased from joanne and so what happened was the the unlike jersey obviously this flannel is woven so it would not stretch so that is why all of a sudden it dawned on me <laughs> why woven pajama bottoms the waist is straight on the pattern pieces versus sort of a tapered in and the reason is because the waist the fabric does not stretch and so to be able to put it on myself uh i you know the waist has to be at least the same size as the widest part of the hips but I didn't do that. Uh, I still, you know, sort of uh, curved it in at the waist portion. But luckily, uh, I never cut it, you know, when I was making the pattern from the last version, I never made it super fitted anyway. So as a result, even though it's a bit tight, I was still able to uh, sort of wiggle in and out of these uh, um, flannel uh, pajama pants. Uh, so that was a mistake that I made, but luckily it was, you know, not a total failure. I could still wiggle in and out of these pajama pants. So that still works out great. And so here is a quick video of that result. And overall, I'm still very happy about it. It's still perfectly comfortable. But now I definitely understand that for a woven fabric, the waist must be at least as wide as the widest part of the hips. And for jersey fabrics uh, with plenty of stretch, the waist portion can be tapered in a bit for a more uh, fitted look. The final pajama -y garment that I will share with you today is this one here, uh, made from a little over one yard of about 60 inch wide cotton jersey fabric that I purchased from MooFabrics.com quite a while ago, uh, easily well, about two and a half years ago. And uh, so here's a close up look of the print itself. I previously used the same fabric uh, for also a jersey dress, also made from the same new look pattern, new look 6246, that I talked about in my video 10. I think this dress is probably my favorite of all these pajamas that I have made recently. And the reason is because it has two additional elements. One is this uh, hoodie here. Uh, so let me show you here. So this is a hoodie. Uh, so the elements that I really love is the hoodie, this one here, and also the bishop sleeves. So about the hoodie is that just about every single ready to wear hoodie that I have ever purchased in my entire life. Um, the neck is just not long enough. So I always feel like it's, you know, my neck is being pushed down by the hoodie, but I just love a good hoodie because it's great. You know, if it's a bit windy, you just put it on. And if you don't need it, you know, just flip, you know, just flip it back. And uh, so I was uh, on the hunt uh, for a hoodie pattern. But then before I purchased any pattern, I decided to search YouTube, of course. And so I came across this um, tutorial by Alyssa from Thoughtful Creativity. And uh, her explanations uh, were incredibly clear. So I just followed her instructions. And this is version one uh, based on her uh, instructions. And they worked out great. I am so happy how this works out. Even though it's a bit, you know, long, I think, you know, uh, for my preference, because normally I wear it, you know, sort of push it back and not all the way in. So I think for version two, I reduce this part here, uh, but still keep this part the same. Uh, so, but anyway, so her tutorial, tutorials are really wonderful. So I will, link her tutorial in the description box below in case you're also interested. 
And it's interesting why well, I kind of figured out why commercial hoodies were just too short for me because uh, when comparing my own measurements to Elisa's measurements, you know, from the neck to the head, my measurement is an inch uh, taller than her measurement. And I don't think I have a particularly large head at all. So that would have to mean my neck is a bit uh, taller than most people's. And that's why I think commercially available hoodies were just too short for me. But now that I'm making my own clothes, this is perfect. So I am so happy about this, you know, so this really works out great. And another uh, feature that I really like about this uh, dress is the bishop sleeves and uh, with this cups here, so as you can see. And uh, to draft the bishop sleeves, I also just follow a tutorial on YouTube. There were several of them and they they all follow the same uh, slash and spread method. And as you can see from this picture here, basically you would divide uh, your sleeve piece in three equal portions. And, uh, and then the middle portion, you will further divide it in half. And that mid, that uh, the middle line, you know, for the middle portion is actually the center uh, where the shoulder seam is. So it's the highest point of your sleep piece. And then once you, do, once you do that, most people tell you not to cut through the, the pattern piece, but I didn't care, I just cut it through. And that made it, that made the spreading uh, much easier for me anyway. And so as you can see from the picture here, the idea is that the portions marked in blue will be equal distance from each other and and uh, equal distance from each other. And because the, the center portion of that piece is further cut into two, so that means the, the two sides of that middle portion will be only half the distance from the center line. For example, in this case, the, the gap, the marked in blue is one and a half inches. But for the middle two smaller pieces, they are 0.75 inches from that center line. I hope I'm explaining this, you know, clearly, but that's the idea. And then you just kind of even down the hand and that gave you the, uh, the puff sleeve. And obviously the bigger the gaps are in between those uh, large pieces, the puffier the sleeve you will have. And so this is the, uh, the, my first attempt and I'm very happy how it works out. And about the cuffs, I just used, you know, the same fabric as this one. I didn't bother buying a uh, matching ribbing. Uh, and so this one is purely self-drafted, but it's so easy to do. So basically is you would decide, you know, how wide your cuff piece would be and times two because the cuff piece is made by folding in half. And also add um, double the amount of seam allowance that you will have. And, uh, and to determine how wide or the circumference of the, uh, the cuff is, you just kind of have to figure it out and then make sure that whatever it is, your hand will be able to get in and out of it. And so that was easy enough. And so this is also version one and it worked out great. So I am also very happy how this works out. So here is a quick video of this hoodie dress. And because I feel that this dress is almost good enough to go out of the house in, I am pairing this dress with a pair of uh, ballet flats in black. And so you can see this hoodie in action. I am so pleased how this hoodie uh, turned out. And I was not too concerned that my experiments would not work out great because it was intended as, you know, my pajamas. So how could it be bad, you know? So I was not too concerned, but I am truly happy how it worked out. So I definitely see more hoodies in my future. I see it very clearly in the crystal ball. So for sure there will be more hoodies in my future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's video on these pajamas and I hope you will continue to stay safe, be well, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye bye!